Welcome back everybody to the Gamecocks Dynasty. Today we are set to take on the Tennessee Volunteers led by former South Carolina Gamecocks offensive coordinator Marcus Satterfield. Satterfield left the team a few years ago to take the head coaching job elsewhere. He has now found his way to a SEC school in Tennessee and he is now trying to get his revenge on his former basically his former team. He was the offensive coordinator under head coach Bilak Schmeems but today He's got a chance to take one final swing back at the number two ranked South Carolina Gamecocks here in Nayland Stadium. The Volunteers haven't had great luck against us in this series, but today they hope to change that around as the Gamecocks again come out with Julius Canary as the starting quarterback. He struggled for the first time last week, so he's hoping to kind of turn it around this week. He's going to start the day with a six-yard pass to Landon Sampson, who has been an excellent excellent contributor in this offense it's been fun to see him improve every year but now a third and four early in the day and that one's just not even close it was expected or intended to go to brandon robinson but canary just couldn't get it on target so first and ten in the first shot of taven jackson he's gonna hit casey frazier the big man and he's gonna rumble down the field for 14 yards taven jackson last time he played the gamecocks three interceptions so this time He's looking for a much, much better performance. But what do you need from him when Jalen Wright's going to go like that 10 yards down the field? And that's going to bring up a second and in inches for Taven Jackson and company. Wright's going to move down the middle. He's going to fire to Jimmy Callaway. Callaway's pushing his way down the field. He's got 11 yards now. First and 10 again for Jackson and company. He's under center. He takes a snap, steps back, fires into the middle of the field under coverage but it is still caught by Casey Frazier Debo Williams I thought had a great opportunity to make a play on it now second and 17 Jackson's gonna keep it himself and this time the Gamecocks have him all wrapped up he loses five and Rory Patrick continues I mean an excellent excellent season he brings him down to Jackson technically got brought down by the second guy but they're gonna give the sack to Rory Patrick now third and 22 with about four and a half minutes remaining Jackson steps up fires to Callaway and he's gonna hold on for 14 yards but they would settle for a field goal there deep in the red zone territory so Gamecock survived that one now Scott Hall on a second and six and makes a nice move on the outside he's got eight yards on that catch now Canary Goes to Lloyd up the middle. Marshawn breaking multiple tackles, and he's got a 12-yard gain. Nice, strong run to start the day for Marshawn Lloyd. He's got 16 yards here in this first quarter. Now third and 10, Kinnear's going to go to Scott Hall. Again, able to hold on to it for 16 yards that time. Second and seven now, much later down the field. Canary out of the shotgun. Lloyd's going to go out to the right, and this time it's in the coverage, but Scott Hall comes down with it, breaks free, and he stays on his feet for 28 yards. Now second and two, Canary going to go to the end zone, and who else? Scott Hall. He was all over the field on this drive, and that is a three-yard touchdown catch as the Gamecocks now strike rather quickly. 7-3 is the score with about 43 seconds left as Gilbert Edmond hits Jackson and he just that ball goes flying free the Gamecocks defense forcing a third and eight Taven Jackson is going to fire for the first down it's going to go to Walker Merrill and he's got the first down just by a couple of yards now second and one Jackson's going to fake it to right throw it quick to Casey Frazier he's got a first down and then some five yards on the catch and run now first and ten Taven Jackson's going to go in the reverse to Walker Merrill and Rory Patrick sticks home or stays home on the right side. He's going to force him to lose three yards on the game or on the play now. Second and 13. Jackson's going to send Frazier in motion under center. Jackson's going to step back, fire into coverage, but Callaway comes down with it, spins off the first tackle. He's got 14 yards now later on that same possession. Second and 13. Taven Jackson out of the shotgun. He's going to continue. Now he's going to have his backup running back beside him to the left side. Second and 13. Jackson's going to pitch it to Thomas. Thomas has an, all kinds of Gamecocks all over him. Justin Thomas with a three-yard loss on his first carry. Now a third and 16 again. They get behind the sticks here deep in the red zone. Jackson now. He takes the snap. Wants to fire for the first down. And Frazier's got it. 
gets a foot down, but he's out of bounds before the first down. So that was a fourth and one. I was thinking the Volunteers might would go for it, but they would just settle for another short field goal. So you've got to wonder if that's going to pay off that they don't take chances, but Julius Kaneri trying to give him the ball right back as he gets sacked on the very next play, loses nine yards. Second and 19 now, Kaneri with Lloyd on the play action. He's going to keep it himself. Fire into quadruple coverage somehow Landon Sampson just comes down with that one he beats his man off the line it's a zone coverage so he finds the hole in between four defenders and Julius Canary puts it right where it needs to be but they face a third and four now Marshawn Lloyd's gonna go on this zone and he's got a lot of space up the right side trying to get a man to block but Brandon Robinson was too slow Lloyd still gets 19 yards after he's pushed out of bounds. Now second and five. Marshawn right down the middle again. He's got nine yards on that one. Second and ten now. Canary has LaVesa Carroll beside him for the first time today. He's going to go to the slant to Corey Rucker. He cuts it up the field and he's got 11 yards for the Gamecocks and another first down. Second and ten now. Canary out of the shotgun. He's going to want to throw it again. Instead he rolls out of the pocket. Plants his feet, fires to the right side. D DJ Long was covered well, but everybody else was covered just as well, if not better. So third and 10 now. Kaneri off the play action, rolls out of the pocket, back across his body, and it falls in between two open receivers, DJ Long and Corey Rucker. So instead, they're going to settle for the field goal as Clark knocks that one right through. Gamecocks up 10-6 to now. This Volunteers offense has been very good so far today as Jimmy Callaway makes a toe-tap catch along the sidelines. They have not really struggled at all to move the ball. They just haven't finished their drive. So the Gamecocks defense playing excellent bend-but-don't-break mentality as Jalen Wright rushes for seven yards and another Volunteer first down. First and 10, under two minutes remain. Jackson holds out to the last second and delivers a strike to Walker Merrill. He's going to make the catch fall down right around the first down marker. They would get it just a few plays later now. First and 10, a little bit over a minute remains. Jackson's going to go to, J to White on the right side, and he's going to cut it up the field. He very, very close to stepping out of bounds, but Keenan Nelson's able to bring him down. Now third and six for the Volunteers, under a minute remaining now, around 49 seconds. Jackson's going to go to Jalen Wright. He's looking for the first down, and he won't get it. He's got three yards on the run. Now, fourth and three. They're going to settle for another short field goal. I would have thought they were going for this one because they had got the ball first or get the ball first in the second half, but that would take the Gamecocks into halftime up by one point, 10-9. to nine. I won't really say we've performed badly, but the Volunteers' offense has really played well up until they get into the red zone. So they have a chance now to start the second half strong. Taven Jackson is going to take the snap. Fire late, but Casey Frazier is open. Nobody even picked him up in the secondary. He's at the 10 to the 5 and face mask. Tackled around the 3, but they would pick up the first down, obviously. And it sets up a first and goal. They did have a false start, so Jackson's going to have to try and get him a couple more yards. This time, he evades the first man in Debo, but he can't get away from the second man. He loses nine. Second and goal now. Jackson's going to send Frazier out to the right side out of the backfield. Now he's going to take the snap. Looks to throw. Wide open. Touchdown. Squirrel White. What a name. 14 yards out for the Volunteers, and they finally capitalize on some good field position, and that is a beautiful Beautiful route. Squirrel White had his man on ice skates. Nobody even went with him in the secondary. Just confusion on that drive, both on the busted coverage on the big game by Casey Frazier and on the touchdown. They would get their two-point conversion. So now it's 17-10 to 10 here on a second and nine. The Gamecocks are going to get it to Corey Rucker. He's open. So now both teams struggling on the defensive side of the ball. Two, what is that, three now in the second half. Defensive laps is just leaving a guy wide open. Now Canary on second and ten off the play action. Off his back foot, Scott Hall is able to grab that one down. And now it's a third and five. Same play it looks like set up right now. Canary off the play action. He's going to go to the end zone, and it's a touchdown. A quick response for the Gamecocks Corey Rucker gets behind his man and the Gamecocks are able to tie it up if they get the extra point I mean zone coverage without or man coverage pressing up with nobody over the top 17-17 you're lucky 
that it's a tie game now. Third and six for the Volunteers. Jalen Wright, nowhere to go, so they'll have to punt it right back. Stone Blanton with the impressive stop in the Gamecocks. They actually face themselves a quick third and 11 as well, looking to hold on to the ball. Kaneri steps into the center and fires down the middle of the field. Brandon Robinson catches that on the go, and he runs down the field for 30 yards now, first and 10. Kaneri going to change the play call. It's a play action. He's got some pressure down the left side, so he steps out of the pocket, firing down the field, and another long touchdown pass by Julius. This one's to Landon Sampson off the play action bootleg. Sampson just on a simple crossing route deep down the field, and he just makes the most of it, finding the hole in the zone. And another Gamecock quick touchdown, 24-17, as that is a beautiful lob pass on the right side. It went straight into the hands of Casey Frazier, 24 yards down the field for the Volunteers. We enter the final minute of the third quarter. Now Taven Jackson is under center. He's got a running back behind him. He's going to go to Jalen Wright, who's got some great blocking as he swerves past a couple of men in the middle of the field and runs into O'Donnell Fortune. Thankfully, he did because if he didn't run into Fortune there on the up the middle, that would have been a touchdown. Now they're going to go with the backup, faking it to Justin Thomas, firing to the open man, Walker Merrill. Another blown coverage there by the Gamecocks secondary. They expected the run off the play action, and instead, Volunteers made a pass. So the Gamecocks now on first and 10. Give it to Lloyd. He's bottled up, but he escapes it. Another missed tackle. Another one, and he's all the way and down the field. Nobody within five yards of him except for number 14, but he will not catch him. Marshawn Lloyd went from what, like a five-yard loss to a 100-yard rushing day for the Gamecocks and a huge, like, 80-yard rushing touchdown for Marshawn. He broke about three tackles in the backfield, and then he broke two more in the secondary, and he was just off to the races after that. I mean, come on, another big play when it's needed the most by Marshawn. We had that on the option play the other day. Now, third and inches, Jackson's Running it right down the middle of the field. He's got 13 yards as we are right around six and six and a half minutes left in this fourth quarter. Taven Jackson out of the shotgun all alone. They're going to run it with him again. This time he's got the first down and then some. Uh, Eminori misses the tackle. Another broken tackle. And O'Donnell Fortune brings him down. But after 35 yards and down at the five. Under six minutes to go. Now a third and goal. For the Volunteers, they're going to go to Justin Thomas, and he trips up on his own center, brought down for a loss of one, and they're going to go for it here. Fourth and goal, five and a half minutes remain. Jackson wants to throw, can't get a throw off, and he's sacked. Just like that, this game is flipped on its head as the Gamecocks have a chance to go down the field and essentially end this one. Julius Canary steps off of a man, and he's off down the field. 18 yards on the read option. He broke that man's tackle in the secondary now, third and two. Canary's going to go to Lloyd, who has met in the backfield this time. The Cavalry arrives, and they make sure he goes down to the ground. Fourth and two now. They're going to go for it deep in their own territory as they run the clock down here right around the 45 yard line Canary's gonna keep it himself he's got the first down and then some off across the 30 and the 40 breaking his way down to the 39 yard line second and 11 now for the Gamecocks under three minutes to go in the day Canary trying to quiet the hostile crowd here in Nayland Stadium Second and 11. They're going to run the clock down. LaVesa Carroll now in for Marshawn Lloyd, who had a bit of a hamstring strain. Canary's going to go to the air off the second and inches, and he fumbles it. It's picked up by Albert Reese, and he tries to run it back. The offensive lineman's going to get nothing in a loss of 13. So that brings up a third and 23 now. Canary, it's obviously going to be a play action. You're not running it on this one. He fires at the last second to Sampson, who catches it. He's upended, and that is a big gain, but still not a first down. So they go for it, and Carroll is upended by two men at the same time. Hit from behind, and then hit on the back, or hit in the front. And the Volunteers' defense gives them a final opportunity here with a minute 43 left. Third and six. Taven's going to step to the right. Fires off, his, off balance, but... 
Still incomplete. He had a guy there. I believe that was Jimmy Callaway. And now a fourth and six for the Volunteers. Jackson brings Callaway in motion. He's going to want to throw it, obviously. They have a screen set up. This one's a Justin Thomas. He breaks the tackle, but he stumbles and steps out of bounds. So a minute and a half remains in the Gamecocks. Get the ball back here deep in Tennessee territory. La Vesa Carroll runs for 15 off the zone. And they are now even farther after the Volunteers use their timeout. Lavesa says, why not score? 18 yards right down the middle of the field. I guess they weren't expecting a run play there. It didn't seem like they brought much pressure, but for whatever reason, they did or didn't. And that is a big completion on the next drive for the Volunteers. Squirrel White, 24 yards. We are under a minute remaining now. 45 seconds on a fourth and four. Taven Jackson steps to the right, fires, and he hits Webb, raking a few tackles, and he's off down to the 17-yard uh, gain. Caleb Webb, and on the final play of the day, the Volunteers, fourth and two, to the right side, and they're going to call it a touchdown. Really, y'all, uh, I mean, his both of his feet probably, or one of his feet didn't look like they got down, but it's still a win as that is the final, an ESPN Classic again. Marshawn Lloyd finished the day 152 yards, one touchdown. The rest of the team had 341 yards and four touchdowns combined. A big bounce back game for Julius Canary as the Gamecocks. Very, very impressive. The overcome resiliency early. Good showing by the defense there in that first half on a bend, double, bend but don't break mentality. Second half, they bent and they broke every possession pretty much. The Volunteers were just doing whatever they wanted on offense. Still, 38-31 to 31 is your final here in Nayland Stadium as the Gamecocks continue their win streak. They are now 7-0 and, oh, and still the number two ranked team in the country. I mean, technically, if you want to be serious about it, it ended up being a two-touchdown victory. Tennessee score as time expired to make it a one-touchdown victory. Dropping 21 points in the third quarter is impressive unless you allow Tennessee to drop 15 as well. Kept them right in the game. Pretty much negated any of those points we even scored. At the end of the day, they had more first downs than us. They had uh, about 20 more yards than we did. Um, total, they had 511. We had 493. Rushing-wise, we blew them out of the water. Passing-wise, they beat us by about 89, I think I would say. We beat them third down conversion-wise. They had 15 attempts. We had nine. Fourth downs, we were tied pretty much. We only did it two times. We missed one. Um, turnovers, both teams surprisingly didn't have a single turnover. Total yards, if we're being accurate, we did beat them technically just off of punt return yards and total yards as a whole. Um, Tennessee, Taven Jackson was impressive after last year. I was expecting him to kind of struggle, but he had almost 400 yards on this offense or on this defense with 42 attempts still. Three touchdowns, not a single interception, but Julius Canary bounced back much better than I expected. 29 attempts, 19 completions. He had three touchdowns right at 300 yards. Rushing wise, Marshawn had 15 for 153. Also added that one touchdown off the impressive impressive 76 yard run julius canary finished the day with six rushing attempts for 10 yards had much more than that unfortunately they count sacks against your yardage total um and lavesa Levesa carroll three for 34 and a touchdown as well on the ground scott hall six for 63 and a touchdown through the air landon sampson five for 99 and a touchdown Corey rucker four for 86 and a touchdown brandon robinson two for 42 and ty monroe one for eight defensively good showing but you know they really they basically took their foot off the gas after that first half it seemed like o'donnell fortune had 10 total tackles um keenan nelson had nine one for loss kawan blanks kajan blanks however you want to pronounce it had one tackle for loss um, we had gilbert edmund with three tackles for losses one sack rory patrick had three tackles for loss two sacks then that was also Alex Huntley with one sack as his only tackle for the day. And at the end of the day, as I said the last few episodes, we won. Doesn't matter how close it is, really. We still ended up winning. But it's a little worrying, in my opinion, that it ended up, you know, taking a game like that for us to win. But we still sit at number two in the country right now. Still have a great shot at the SEC Championship and the National Championship. 
Oklahoma still sits at number one. They are looming off in the distance for us to take them on. Basically, whoever wins that game gets into the SEC championship. It is a bloodbath right now in the SEC East. You've got Oklahoma, us at number two. Both of these teams are undefeated in the conference. Then you've got Florida, who we still have to play, and they are only 4-1 and one in the conference. So theoretically, I guess, if we beat Oklahoma and then lost to Florida, Florida would technically still win the division because they would have a tiebreaker over us who would be better than Oklahoma even though they lost to Oklahoma. Georgia after that though everybody else pretty much fell off. Um, Ole Miss is winning the western side of things with Alabama in second place. Mississippi State in third. They are much more divided over there in the SEC West but as a whole the top 25 hasn't changed too much. We can actually check out the BCS rankings for once, these are the most important. We're sitting at number two. This is the first week that they came out. Oklahoma at number one, South Carolina at two, Oregon at three, Ohio State at four. So that's the top four right now. I'll let you guys look through the rest. I'm not really going to name them all out. Alabama at 12, that catches my eye. Um, they still have a great shot to make the national or make the SEC championship game. So I definitely wouldn't count them out and just yet. Obviously, they have a great opportunity still to get in on it heisman watch is pretty much the same as we've seen javante barnes out of oklahoma is leading the way he's got lou nichols behind him pretty close behind he actually was number one dropped down to number two tyler buckner making a run at it for the fighting irish and you've got trey benson and christian valu i'm assuming is Vilu is how you would pronounce that name and if we're going to check out the scores and schedules around the world real quick around the country Real quick, I guess I should say more accurately. We'll go back to week eight and see what all went on in the top 25 matchups for the nation. South Carolina, obviously, we beat Tennessee. Florida took down East Carolina, which is a pretty decent matchup. The Pirates last season were undefeated at one point. Penn State beat Michigan by a ton, 25 points. Cincinnati beat up on BYU. Oregon takes down Colorado. Colorado continues to struggle. They are 3-3 three and three now. Auburn takes down upsets, I guess I should say. Texas A&M, a team that beat us last year, but we were able to beat them this year. They are now 4-3. and three. Disappointing for them if you're, the, you're an Aggies fan. Ole Miss beats LSU, continues their strong season. Arkansas beats or Alabama beats Arkansas by one point, a nail biter there. Ohio State dominates Nebraska, who still hasn't had a good season at all in this dynasty. Georgia Tech continues their ranked run against North Carolina. They beat them by 20. Utah over Arizona State. Any games that interest us? Oklahoma, as we saw, beat Kansas. Notre Dame beats up on USC. That's a big rivalry game, so for them to dominate like that is crazy. Georgia beats Vanderbilt. Vanderbilt has not won a game yet. Hopefully, that's not against us. Uh, knock on wood. Florida State beats NC State by a whole lot. Oklahoma State beats Baylor by one, so that's a good top 25 matchup. And that was all the top 25 matchups from last week. So a lot of upsets, or a couple of upsets and a couple actually pretty decent games. Recruiting-wise, we missed out on some prospects. I am kind of worried because this recruiting class hasn't made a lot of noise just yet. We've got, you know, a couple of weeks left really to try and make a push. Um, but I'm getting a little bit worried, I'm not going to lie. Um, because we have a few weeks for some of these visits to come in and nobody has committed yet. We've missed out on a lot of big prospects. For some reason, even at 600 points... We're still very far behind on a few of these guys, um, even though I thought we would have been way, way ahead of them. Like, if you look down here, we missed out on Eric Stone, a guy that we were going after very, very heav heavily, and we actually had a visit coming up for him, so we're going to miss out on him. Um, hopefully, we can take advantage of that by getting a couple of these other guys. I would like to see a few of these guys on the roster, um, but it's going to be a process, and I'm not going to show you guys all the scouting that I do because that's kind of boring. Um, but hopefully we're able to set up something that allows us to um, get a few of these recruits. But next episode, we'll be taking on Missouri. Missouri, obviously, they upset us last year. Um, and it's not going to be easy to beat them. I mean, <clears throat> their defense has always been amazing. Statistically, ratings-wise, they're better than us. Um, but they have us beat in pass defense by a good amount they've got us beat in turnover differential by a good amount especially after that game two weeks ago 
Um, we beat them in total defense. We beat them in everything else besides rushing offense. Um, and it's going to be interesting returning back to williams Bryce Stadium. Um, but I hope this team can continue to play at a very high level. Because after Missouri, we have some big games. We've got Vanderbilt. Then we've got a bye week. Then we've got Florida, Oklahoma, and Clemson. Three straight weeks. Number eight, number one in a big, big rivalry game there against the Tigers. So we need to win these next two weeks to even have a chance to win those or even have a reason to win those three games. So that is going to be a big, big thing to talk about in practice these next few weeks. Thank you all for watching this one. I hope you enjoyed this series. I hope you enjoyed this episode. And I'll catch you guys next episode as we take on the Missouri Tigers.